Welcome to Alex G's Aquarium, everybody. Today I want to give an update on the 1600 gallon system calcium reactor. I have a Geo Calcium Reactor. It's their commercial, the biggest one they make. Holds 50 pounds of media in the main chamber and a couple gallons of fine media in the secondary chamber. Now I added this calcium reactor to the 1600 gallon system because two part dosing or dosing calcwasser just wasn't going to be an effective method of controlling my calcium alkalinity and magnesium levels along with some of my other trace elements. And the calcium reactor's whole purpose is to kind of, you know, get set up and running. It will dissolve uh, media that is actually crushed up coral skeletons. And by doing that, it's going to dose your tank with alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and also a whole bunch of other trace elements as it's breaking down actual coral skeletons and feeding them back into your tank via a liquid solution. Now, the calcium reactor, of course, when I turned it up and turned it on, you have to get it calibrated and set up to run on your system. Now, everyone's aquarium is gonna be different. Mine is no different than anyone else's. It's just a whole lot bigger than most. And the thing with the calcium reactor is that you need to tune it to make sure that you don't overdose anything in the tank and when I talk about overdosing I mean you don't want to have your alkalinity or your calcium spike up super high because if it gets too high it can cause calcium precipitation in the water where it'll actually kind of start to snow in the tank the other thing that could potentially happen is a high alkalinity spike from a calcium reactor in general no matter what you're dosing can potentially harm if not kill your corals if you're not careful Therefore, I wanted to replace two-part dosing with the use of a calcium reactor over time and do it slowly. I hook the reactor up, I put it on a slow drip rate, and there's a few things that I've learned over the last few weeks on this calcium reactor as far as control goes. Now, I monitor the pH with inside my reactor, which is kind of how I determine how much CO2 gas I should be adding into that reaction chamber. I also keep an eye on the pH level in my main aquarium system, which even with the calcium reactor up and running, it has been maintaining a pH of about 8.0 to 8.03 during the day as a high, and at a low, it's into the 7.9 range at night when the lights all shut off. The pH inside the reactor itself, I've been trying to keep it between 6.7 and 6.5, it varies quite a bit and I've encountered a few things with this calcium reactor that weren't really expected and I did make a couple changes to my installation. The first thing that I did change on the calcium reactor was how I was feeding water into it. Now the calcium reactor having good flow that's consistent into the reactor is important as it helps to control the drip rate of the affluent out of the reactor which is dosing your tank. Now originally I had kind of plugged into a manifold that feeds my UV sterilizer, my 150 gallon refuge tank, and the way I had it valved I figured I had plenty of pressure to fill the reactor up and run it, which I did, but the drawback I found was any time that I had to do maintenance, uh, I have a drain valve over there for filling up like a 5 gallon bucket when I get new corals or fish so that I can you know, take some tank water out conveniently without scooping a bucket in. Every time I actuated that valve, I would introduce some air into the calcium reactor and its flow would be completely thrown off. Because that manifold is feeding water to the refuge tank, the UV sterilizer, and the reactor, all those different pressures made it to where the water wasn't consistently going into the calcium reactor right. Ultimately, I just got a little SICE 1.0 pump and put that on there and now it's off that manifold so it has its own feed pump which has worked out a lot better. I'm getting much more consistent flow. The other thing that I encountered with the calcium reactor so far is that the drip rate hasn't stayed consistent even with a new pump. What I've been finding is I still get a lot of air getting drawn into this reactor and it's not because there's any leaks. What I think is happening is because the water is being drawn from the tank where the protein skimmer is dumping out it's sucking in a lot of micro bubbles into the reactor and they're getting chopped up by the pump constantly. 
those air bubbles as they come out are going through the quarter inch tube into the secondary chamber and I had a really long tube going from the little needle ball valve that controls your affluent all the way to the secondary chamber it was about a three to four foot piece of tubing I since just today cut that in half and made it a more direct run because I found every time I would touch that tubing the water flow would drastically change and that just told me that I was probably getting some air buildup in that tubing just because it was so long and kind of snaking around so that's been shortened up we'll see if that makes a difference the next thing I believe I'm going to do because I'm still just drawing a lot of air into this reactor is I'm going to take a filter sock or some kind of filter floss and put it over the intake of the pump for the calcium reactor by the time water gets to this area it shouldn't have a whole lot in the way of debris on it I think I'm going to do something that's kind of loose fitting and see if I can't stop a few of those micro bubbles from getting sucked into the pump I don't know if it's going to work that's the next thing I want to try because I think that air getting into the reactor is ultimately causing me to have a little bit of an issue with keeping a steady affluent rate. Now, besides those slight issues I've got with this reactor, which I consider to be pretty minor at this point, since this is my first calcium reactor and I'm still trying to get the hang of it, I will say it is now taken over and I have not been dosing for the last week and a half, two weeks now. I started to really step up how I was using this reactor. I was making slight adjustments to it and I learned after the first three weeks that that just wasn't going to be enough. The system so large and it was consuming so much calcium alkalinity already. There was just no way that I was going to be able to make really tiny adjustments. I ended up doing two things to ultimately get this calcium reactor tuned in. One, I dramatically increased the drip rate from you know one drop a second to multiple drops a second. It's almost to the point where it's a stream at some times, but I've kind of held it back just a little bit from that for now. On the regulator side of things, I made two different adjustments. The first, I started to increase the frequency in which bubbles are getting released into the calcium reactor for the carbon doser. I dialed it to every six seconds of bubbles being released. The next thing I did was increase the pressure on the low pressure side of the regulator. By increasing that pressure, I increased the bubble size and the amount of gas that's released every six seconds. In conjunction with increasing the affluent rate and adjusting the regulator, I have been able to tune this calcium reactor in to where it's giving the 1600 gallon system everything it needs. Now I've been holding my alkalinity now at 8.3 for about a week and a half. I was keeping it around 8.6 and I'm probably going to increase it, but I wanted to give myself a little bit of time at 8.3 to ensure that I was getting some good stability. At this point, it's been stable for a week. I haven't been dosing anything. Now, I did test my calcium magnesium as well. My calcium is running a little bit high. It's actually running right around 500 right now. And I know why that happened when I was tuning this calcium reactor in and I had to dose alkalinity. I was dosing calcium at the same rate. I don't always test the two together. That's something that I just do which of course I should have been testing the calcium as well. But it's a good thing to know that if you're turning on a calcium reactor and you're switching from one method of dosing to another, that you make sure you test your calcium alkalinity and magnesium as it might shift the values a bit as you're turning one up and starting to lessen the dosing of another. The calcium's still been holding around 500 for the last couple of weeks. I'm not going to make any attempts at this time to try and lower it down all the corals have been doing really well for the most part. Now, over the last couple of weeks, I did lose one coral and I had another that wasn't really doing so good. But there are some other circumstances around this that I don't think is related to high calcium levels because the rest of the SPS and LPS, and even the softies, have all been doing great. A lot of them are showing some really good signs of growth. And the magnesium in the tank is running right around 1440, which is just fine. I'm happy with that level. It was significantly higher than that. 
and it's actually been kind of slowly coming down and that's exactly what I want to see we'll just keep an eye on that level as well but the calcium reactor for the for the time being is completely taken over and it's doing a great job and once I figure out the problem of getting less air sucked into that reactor I think it's going to even increase its performance more and give me a little less in the need for, to do tuning. That's what I wanted to cover in today's video to talk about the calcium reactor update. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead, give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you like the content. If you have any comments or questions on the geo calcium reactor that's running on the 1600 gallon system or the carbon doser, please go ahead and leave them down below. Or if you got any tips, tricks on calcium reactors, I'd love to hear them. As I said, this is my first calcium reactor and I'm kind of learning every day a little bit more with it, how it's working. And so far, I'm very satisfied with it. I think in a month or two, I'll get all the little minor speed bumps kind of figured out with this and get into a full smooth operation. But I'm really looking forward to hear what everyone has to say in the community. Of course, if you'd like to see more on the 1600 gallon system, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that bell notification. I'm putting out two videos a week. I'm always talking about different topics in the 1600 gallon system. And if you mention a topic that you'd like to see in the comments, I might even make a video on it. I've done it in the past and I will certainly continue to do it because I want to share all the different aspects of keeping this system and the ups and downs with it. Thanks again for watching everybody and I'll see you on the next video.